Welcome to Ethiopia Today. We will cover the following topic in our today's presentation. Unity is pivotal to counter-meddling in Ethiopia's internal affairs the reporter Ethiopia highlighted. There is no sign that the unrelenting pressure the West has been putting on Ethiopia since the start of a brutal war between the government of Ethiopia and the forces of Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF following the latter's unprovoked attack on the troops of the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defense Forces based in the northern region of Tigray on November 3, 2020 is waning any time soon. The U.S., European Union, and the UN have been piling on diplomatic pressure on Ethiopia through various means including censuring it at the Security Council, urging Westerners to leave and not to travel to the country, cautioning pilots that they could be directly or indirectly exposed to ground weapons fire and or surface-to-air fire due to the conflict, and imposing sanctions on and withdrawing Ethiopia's benefits under the United States Tariff-Free African Growth and Opportunity Act Argoa. Moreover, Many Ethiopians believe that the Western mainstream media, human rights activists, humanitarian aid workers, non-governmental organizations, and researchers affiliated with Western humanitarian aid agencies and research institutions have been conducting a propaganda war against the administration of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed with the aim of replacing it with a pliant government or if that does not succeed to force it into acceding to the TPLF's demands. In the latest round of diplomatic pressure being brought to bear on Ethiopia, the United Nations Human Rights Council decided in a special session held this Friday December 17, 2021 upon the request of the European Union to establish an International Commission of Human Rights Experts on Ethiopia tasked with undertaking a probe into alleged egregious human rights violations and abuses perpetrated by all sides in the ongoing war in northern Ethiopia. The team of three experts will seek to establish the facts and circumstances surrounding the alleged violations and abuses, to collect and preserve evidence, and to identify those responsible. The resolution calling for the formation of the Commission Council's special session was opposed by all African states on the Council on the ground that the investigation would be counterproductive and susceptible to exacerbating tensions. Ethiopia had rightfully criticized the decision to hold the special session in the first place, urging members of the council, which it described as having been hijacked and used as an instrument of political pressure, to stand against short-sighted interests and refuse the politicization of human rights by rejecting the resolution. In addition, it categorically rejected the decision and vowed not to cooperate with any mechanism that was imposed on it without its consent saying it constituted an unwarranted meddling into its internal affairs under the pretext of protecting human rights. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission has also expressed disapproval of the decision arguing the creation of a new body was repetitive, counterproductive to the ongoing implementation processes as per the recommendations of the joint investigation it undertook with the UN Rights Office into the alleged violations and abuses committed prior to the unilateral ceasefire declared by the Ethiopian government in June 2021, and further delayed redress for victims and survivors. True to form Western countries on the Council have chosen to stand with the TPLF, magnifying the alleged atrocities committed by the Ethiopian government while making a perfunctory mention of the slaughtering of innocent civilians, rape and sexual abuse, use of child soldiers, pillaging, and destruction of civilian infrastructures the terrorist-designated group is guilty of. As it has amply demonstrated for decades the West's motivations behind the patently unfair position it had adopted on Ethiopia are anchored in its parochial self-interest, rendering the actions it accordingly takes a zero-sum game. It has deemed Ethiopia's disinclination to become a client state an impediment to the realization of its strategic vision in Africa and the Middle East. Its firm refusal to kowtow to the West has been perceived to make it harder to advance the interests of Egypt, the cornerstone of its Middle East policy, on the filling and operation of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam Gerd. Furthermore, the West is not pleased by the juggling act Ethiopia is engaged in to remain on the good sides of both it and China given the new Cold War it is waging on Beijing. As Ethiopia has been a beacon of black Africans' anti-colonialism struggle and is inspiring a nascent continent-wide movement against the neo-colonialist designs of the US and its allies. 
it is bearing the brunt of the West's all-out new Cold War whose end game is to curb China's growing influence in Africa. Ethiopians need to have no illusions about the fact that the scripted and concerted pressure the West is exerting on Ethiopia is not only intended to make an example of a proud nation of over 110 million people. It also serves as a warning to other African countries which have the temerity to resist neocolonialism in all its forms. The West should realize that this is an exercise in futility thanks to the rise of a multipolar and polycentric system that is challenging the undemocratic and unipolar global order it had foisted over the rest of the world since the end of the Cold War. As the only African country that has never been under the yoke of colonialism and whose citizenry is fiercely patriotic, it's unthinkable that the West can arm twisted into dancing to its tune. If the West persists in its misguided course of action out of the notion that the people and government of the country will surrender, it will learn the follies of its ways the hard way. Ethiopia has the capacity to find a resolution to the political crisis engulfing it. Anyone who has its interest at heart should stop meddling in its domestic affairs and instead support it in seeking enduring solutions. This can be accomplished though if and only if Ethiopians from all walks of life come together to the defense of their beloved nation. The reporter Ethiopia, thanks our viewers, don't forget to like, and share. And also subscribe to our channel if this is your first time. Let's do our part in disseminating the messages to many people as much as possible. And by doing so, you are fighting for Ethiopia and also inspiring us to continue producing these and similar news. May God bless Ethiopia and its people. Many thanks.